that this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. All men are created equal, but I question and I challenge you to think about this. Are all men treated in an all men living equal? Dr. King had a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. Are we all sitting down equally at the table? Are we all, do we all have a place at the table? That is something to think about. Dr. King had a dream that his four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Hmm. The very fact that we're arguing today about voting rights and having to pass a voting rights bill, I question that. Dr. King had a dream that little black boys and black girls would be able to join hands with little white boys and little white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. We live in a society that we don't have segregation in, in, in the physical form, but do we have segregation in the economic or, or, or form in which we are all living as equals and we have equality and we have equity? This was Dr. King's dream that we would have these things, but how do we live up to his, his, his legacy? My challenge for you is for everyone to start with themselves, to commit to changing ourselves, to not rely on Dr. Dreams, Dr. King's dream just one day out of the year. And today is a great day, but I challenge the fact that we should be focusing on and we should be reflecting on Dr. King's dream, his legacy, 365 days of the year. This is the only way that we can bring about the change we wanna see in the world. So I close with this. Dr. King wanted equal rights, but equal rights, let's think about this. Equal rights is not for just, equal rights is not just that others may have less. Equal rights is for us to have all together. So in order to be the change we need to seek in the world, in order to carry on Dr. King's legacy, we must reach into ourselves, change ourselves. As Michael Jackson says, the man in the mirror, look in the mirror and what can we do as ourselves to be the change we seek to be in the world. Thank you for listening to me. Um, I hope I have gotten the program off to a good start. Uh, I thank had you, Representative, Representative Gibson. Thank you so much for those inspirational words. What we're gonna do before you introduce your students is that I want us all to be refreshed in the very words that you referenced in your introduction, which is refreshed by the enduring words of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. So if we could, we're gonna play a short video where we recall together the words of Dr. King, and then I'm gonna have each of you join in as you bring them in, Representative Gibson, so that they can reflect on what they've just heard. So if we could run the video now, um, we will move forward. difficulties of today and tomorrow. I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slaves owners will be able to sit together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice, sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and little black girls 
will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. This is our hope. This is the faith I go back to the mount with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. With this faith, we'll be able to transform the genuine discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, pray together, to struggle together, go to jail together, to stand up for freedom forever, knowing that we will be free one day. And I say to you today, my friends, let freedom ring from the particular hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the mighty Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the carvaceous slopes of California. But not only there, let freedom ring from the stone mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain in Tennessee. Let freedom ring for every hill in Mohill in Mississippi. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. When we let it rain from every village and hamlet, every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black man and white man, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last! Free at last! Thank God Almighty, we're free at last! Representative Gibson, and with that, let's let freedom ring with our special guests, our children from around the state. Uh, I hand it back over to you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hernandez. Um, I have the pleasure to introduce two students that I work, at, work with um, at the Carmen Aries Middle School in Bloomfield, Connecticut. They're both eighth graders and both are wonderful students. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you first, Ms. Katana Tate. Katana, the, show, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. My name is Katana Tate. I am 13 years old. I go to Carmen and Race Middle School. The quote that I chose is, we may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. This quote performed by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. means that we are all natives from one country, but we are all in one world. The reason why I chose this specific quote is because this quote stood out to me. This one sentence quote tells me that people from all around the world have different shades, religions, and beliefs. Each culture and ethnicity is different and unique in their own way and do different things, eat different foods, and wear different clothes. Such as Indonesian people who eat nazi goreng as a main dish compared to Peruvian people who eat ceviche as a main dish. Another example is Islams and Christians. Islamic people wear robes, short coats, and scarves. Christians wear vestments and garments. Even though these cultures and religions are different, they are all equal cultures and can be in the same area and still have the same values. These two examples prove that as low or as high as you may come from, you are as equal as the other standing right next to you. The adversities that this man, this very brave man have went through were unbelievable. But thanks to him, I, I can go to school and get an education. Thanks to him, I can drink water, from the same fountain as someone who looks different than me. Thanks to him, I can play with my Caucasian friends and have a good time without being racially profiled, just because the fight in this man's heart and the dreams that he had and pursued to make this world a better place. I'm hoping to leave an impact on each student and person here and I'm hoping to touch all of your hearts and that you learn something that will benefit you and your life in many ways. Thank you. 
Thank you, Katana. And you have left an impact. And if anything I can take away with this from this is that um, we are all in the same boat. You're correct. We just have to make sure that we have enough room in that boat. Great job, Katana. I'm proud of you. My second person to introduce, to have the honor to introduce, is an eighth grader from Carmen Aries Middle School, as I stated earlier, Mr. Vaughn Glanville. Vaughn, the floor is yours. Hello, um, I'm Vaughn Glanville from Carmen Aries Middle School, as previously stated. I am 13, and I would like to bring to you a exempt on the quote I've chosen. This quote I've chosen is Martin Luther King's quote, if you can't run, walk, if you can't walk, crawl, but keep moving forward. I believe this quote represents perseverance. It shows that we must progress, even if there are abundant obstacles impeding us from doing so. Dr. King implored us to persevere, and he set this example perfectly with his own life. King took assault after assault of verbal degradation, terrible enough to cripple a man nowadays. He suffered round for round of verbal, oh, I'm sorry. He suffered round for round of castigation, but he had an invisible armor forged with hope and determination, combining to create his restless resolve. It is truly inspiring how Dr. King persevered throughout his life. Even when his home was bombed by segregationists, he kept moving forward. Even when he was put in jail, sorry. Um, even when he was sent to jail for peacefully protesting the malice of this world, he retained his determination, proceeded to write, advocating for equality for all. Even after his death, his will to complete the society still continues to make a lasting impact on all of our lives. If it wasn't for his restless tenacity and the people who followed in his footsteps, I and many people would not be here today. This quote is truly the meaning of Dr. Martin Luther King's legacy, and we must all take inspiration from it to better ourselves to overcome the challenges of our daily lives. Thank you. Thank you, Vaughn. That was a great quote and is a great um, explanation of what that quote means to you. And if anything I can say is perseverance, right? Keep moving forward, no matter what happens, keep moving forward. And that was the message that I got out of that. So thank you for that, Vaughn. Great job, I'm proud of you. Now, Mr. Hernandez, I turn the floor back over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Representative Gibson. And thank you for the two of you, for your students, for really um, launching us into what today we are doing is honoring the legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King on the day that we choose uh, to honor that legacy. Uh, and together we are doing that with children of the state of Connecticut, really representing the ever evolving and ever moving dream uh, that Dr. King left us with. So thank you again. And uh, now we're gonna move on to the rest of our students who are here to share part of their vision of what inspires them uh, we really wanted to, to focus today on what inspires you, the people in your life that inspire you, the way that Dr. King inspired all of us. And today we're going to start with, uh, with Kayu Leaf. Uh, Kayu is a fourth, uh, fourth grader at St. Joseph's School in Danbury. Uh, Kayu is the host of Kayo Ninja News. So we have a celebrity among us. You're each celebrities. Uh, Kayo runs CNN Kayo Ninja News, a kids news comedy program on YouTube. He's an, uh, he is autistic, an entertainer, and a ninja. He loves art, math, and science. He sings, takes drum, and horseback riding lessons. In the future, he hopes to be someone who can change the world and make it a better place. Caillou's grandmother inspires him. Welcome, Caillou. Well, I just want to say that it's Caillou, not Caillou. Actually, just C with a U. Caillou. Okay, so can I start? Go ahead, please. Go ahead, Caillou. The was dream. Just like Dr. King had a dream for his four little children, my Vava, that's grandma in Portuguese, had a dream since she was a little girl. She dreamed of having a big family. She didn't have a mom or dad and worked for a family that took her in. But she was not allowed to go to school, play, or and have toys, and didn't have love in her life for a long time. So she worked very hard so that the next generation of her family went out of the childhood that she had. My mom and her siblings are, are my vovo's dream, and so am I. I have, I have love, toys, school, and time to be a kid. I feel like it's my job to keep her dream alive. 
by working hard to give my kids the children I have. But what inspires me about her, just like Dr. King, is that they fought to give the next generations of something they never had. They believed in a better future for you and me, our children, and our children's children. A future where we all believe that all people are created equal in a special way. No matter how hard my life gets as an autistic person, I must be myself and push through to honor Vava and Dr. King because that's what they did. And that is why today the world is a better place because of them. They never gave up and fought for their dreams. I am a lucky kid that Vava is still with me. I am sad that someone like Dr. King is nobody is no longer with us. So today and every day, let's keep fighting for his dream. Tia Movovo. Caillou, thank you so much. I had no idea that you and I had something in common, uh, that my, my inspiration is also my grandmother. So thank you so much for reminding me of my grandmother, my abuelita. And uh, I, I appreciate you starting us off. Uh, thank you, Caillou. Uh, thank next you. we have, thank you. Next, we have Liv, Gra Liv Grace Azima. Uh, Liv Grace is a fifth grade student at Tracy Elementary School in Norwalk. Liv is Haitian American. She is the eldest of her siblings and is described as a leader. She enjoys playing computer games, roller skating, hanging out with friends and fashion. She plays soccer, sings and plays clarinet. She loves learning about real estate and loves caring for others. Liv's mother and father inspire her. Welcome Liv. Hi, thank you for the introduction, Mr. Hernandez. Um, mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Liv Azima, and I'm a fifth grade student at Tracy Elementary School in Norwalk. First, I'd like to thank the commission for inviting me to this special event. I am honored to be a part of celebrating the inspiring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and to be able to share a little about the people who inspire me. It was really hard to hard to only choose one person for this because both my mom and dad inspire me so much. First, my parents inspire me through their character. My parents are always speaking about the golden rule, that treating others the way you want it to be treated is really important. They consistently remind me to be kind and caring towards others, to always try and find a solution when I have a problem, and to be a part of that solution. They inspire me to do the right thing even when no one is watching, and to, and to always stand up for what is right. They show me how to take responsibility for my own actions and be honest with myself and others. They inspire me to never give up and always believe anything is possible if you work hard and put your mind to it. My mom and dad inspire me to want to help others and give back to the community. My mom helps people when they are sick and helps them, helps them stay healthy by giving them medicine and vaccines. She works to help others while putting herself at risk. This shows me how to be brave and selfless like my mom is. My dad volunteers his, his time to help make important decisions that benefit all of the Norwalk students, all of the students in Norwalk Public Schools. They inspire me to be a leader and always do what is right, even when it is not easy. Lastly, and most importantly, my parents inspire me to be myself. They both inspire me to be unique and to love myself the way I am. They both inspire me to recognize my own strengths and not compare myself to others. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. inspired millions of people around the world. I'm very lucky to have two people in my life who their examples inspire and teach me to be the very best person I can be. For this reason, I will forever be grateful to them. In Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s words, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But by all means, keep on moving. Thank you so much, Liv, um, and thank you for so powerfully sharing, again, the words of Dr. King, uh, and, and again, uh, for inspiring all of us. Next, we have Gabriela Green. Uh, Gabriela is a sixth grade student at the Interdistrict School for Arts and Communications out of New London. Uh, Gabriela enjoys drawing and watching anime. She loves dancing and recently started playing the trumpet. Gabby, as she's called, has an interest in leadership. She was recently elected class rep representative of the Student Advisory Board, and she would like to be either an engineer because uh, she loves hands-on activities such as building models or a mental health therapist because she enjoys talking to her peers and being there when they need support. Uh, LaShawn Cunningham is Gabby's uh, inspiration, blooming 
into greatness coach. Uh, uh, and we will be hearing about LaShawn Cunningham from Gabriella. Welcome, Gabby. Thank you so much. Okay, my name is Gabriella Green and I am 11 years old. I attend Isaac Middle School in New London. I chose Ms. LaShawn Cunningham because she is such a sweet person who cares for everyone and is a good example from Martin Luther King's vision. She has truly been an inspiration, inspiration to me because she works so hard just for us to have fun. The top reasons why I'm inspired by Ms. LaShawn is because she is hardworking, a leader, and, she, and teaches us to be kind and teaches us to be respectful to all people. Ms. LaShawn is my Blooming into Greatness coach. She teaches me and my teammates to be hardworking by encouraging us to push our limits when learning a new skill. When things get hard, she tells us to never say I can't because it symbolizes just giving up and not trying our best. Ms. LaShawn inspires me to be a leader because she is always involved in planning diversity events for our town. One of my favorite community events put together by Mrs. Sean is the African Head Wrap and Streetwear Fashion Show. The other event organized by Mrs. Sean that I really loved was when she put together the Blooming Into Greatness Showcase. I chose these as my favorite events because they both show diversity and brought the community together. Mrs. Sean teaches us to be kind by example. During our practices and performances, she encourages us to cheat to cheer each other on and compliment each other if we're doing solos. She also teaches us to respect our elders and our community. She encourages our group to help with community gar garbage cleanup. She, will also, she, will al she also will have us perform at senior centers. Mrs. Sean is more than my dance instructor. In the four years I've been a part of Blooming Into Greatness, she has become what we call family. She is the aunt that I adore so much and works so hard for us just to do the things we love. In short, Mrs. Son is the best aunt and coach there is, and I am truly grateful she has entered my life. Thank you, Mrs. Sean. It has truly been amazing to be a part of the team. Thank you, Gabriella, and thank you for honoring uh, Mrs. Sean. It's so wonderful to hear that legacy of multi-generational impact and Gabriella, that's just so wonderful that you chose someone so special uh, to you. honor today. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Sydney Pettit. Uh, Sydney is a sixth grader at Hebron Elementary School in Hebron. Uh, Sydney, li Sydney likes the ocean and all creatures in it. She loves swimming and ballet. She enjoys history and learning about wars and the peacemakers in them. She believes that if people learn how to treat everyone equally, the world would be a much happier and more peaceful place. Sydney practices this herself by being empathetic and trying to see other people's viewpoints, even if they're different than her own. She has a positive attitude and enjoys church and school. Welcome, Sydney. Um, thank you. Um, I wrote my essay about my friend Libby. Um, it all happened one day when I bumped into Libby, backing off from the chaos of being new. I said sorry and so did she, and then before we knew it, we were best friends. She became my friend's sister. We saw each other every school day and after school. We were inseparable. And I had a problem and she was there. We had fun playing element games and picking games. And when I was in trouble, she would step in. When she was sad and I would sad, we would hug. She got me out of being physically attacked at a church we went to after school. And she would teach me different stuff each day. She was the reason for life's, life's problems were bearable. She taught me what a good friend looks like, caring, helpful, funny, and bearable, and she would save me from life. She was my only true best friend, and I was happy. She would be there when I cried, but most of all, she pushed me to go beyond my comfort zone. She helped me realize that my life was waiting for me, and I wasn't waiting for life. She's the closest thing I have to a sister. I have had a I find that if you are hurt or you need someone to bounce things off of, you should have a friend because sometimes you can't run to your family or talk to them. Sometimes you need someone like Libby to be there for you. She taught me that you can be different and still be a best friend. She's there for me even if she moved to Vermont. And even through the crazy stuff the world throws at us, we're still connected. She is there even if we are 244.6 miles from she will always be in my heart and she changed my life forever. 
Sydney, that's so beautiful. And it's so beautiful that uh, you chose to honor in a way that, sh um, that also expresses your own heart and what's valuable to you. Uh, so I really appreciate that message of empathy uh, as, we, as we move through our presentations. I think that rings true for so many of us who are sharing today. So thank you, Sydney, for that. Um, next, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna take a moment uh, just to share the message of one student who wasn't able to join us today because, um, because that student is in the middle of a storm and has lost power. But I wanted to just make sure that the power of that student's words are not lost and that we can share them together uh, despite the fact that the storm uh, kept uh, that student from coming here today. So that student's name is Hassani Wilson. Hassani is a student from Waterbury uh, who is inspired by Corey Kenshin. Now I'm gonna read this in Hassani's voice because I wanna make sure that I get everything exactly right the way he wrote it. So uh, Hassani says, I attend Catholic Academy of Waterbury. I am 10 years old and I am in the fifth grade. I am on the basketball team for my school and I also play soccer. I like to play video games and watch people play on YouTube. Most of the famous YouTubers are white and they do not look like me. Corey is black and has 12.5 million subscribers and he's very popular. About Corey, Corey Devante Williams, better known as Corey X Kenshin, is an American YouTube channel creator of video games. He has a net worth of $15 million in 2021. His annual income is about $1 million. His maximum income comes from ad revenue and sponsorships. He was born on November 9th, 1992 in Michigan in the United States. When I grow up, I wanna work in tech and possibly create video games. I love YouTube and I do not want to have a regular job like most people. If I can be successful doing something I love like Corey that will make me happy, I will do, I will do so. I won $10 against someone playing a video game. Currently, I make TikTok videos and I have over 70 followers and more than 180 likes. I wanna grow my following and one day be like Corey Kenshin. Now, what's so powerful, thank you, Hassani, so much. And I know that you're going to be watching this video the way so many kids are probably watching it now after it's been recorded. But I just wanted to thank you for reminding all of us the power of doing for yourself and then working with others to create something beautiful together. Your individual voice is made stronger when voices come together with purpose, uh, but also in creative innovative and new ways that people haven't even thought of before. And that's so powerful about the message that you share with us today. So I really want to appreciate you, Hassani, and uh, please weather the storm, and we'll see you soon. So next we have joining us uh, is Brandon Tavares. Brandon is an eighth grader at Northwestern Regional Middle School, Region 7 in Winstead. Brandon sp spends a lot of his time playing soccer. When he has free time, he enjoys playing video games. Brandon is currently a member of the Civil Rights Stories Club at his school. His favorite subject is math. He would like to be a physical therapist. Now, Brandon chose a quote that he'd like to feature today, and the quote is, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. So I want to welcome you, Brandon, uh, and have you share your thoughts. Hello. Thank you for the introduction. To me, this quote is calling for us to advocate for equality and civil rights, not just in times when it is trendy on social media, but when people eventually forget the importance of working towards equality, even after headlines about protests and new legislation disappear from the news. Additionally, this quote is emphasizing the importance of speaking out in environments where having difficult conversations about race and equality are not welcome. Whether that be calling a friend or family member out for a racist bi or biased comment, or seeking out ways to actively improve equality in our communities, change is uncomfortable. Despite the uncomfortability of growth, it is truly good people who persist and can be attributed with causing lasting change. It was uncomfortable during the civil rights movement when my ancestors, led by Dr. King, protested their mistreatment and faced racial violence. Protesting was uncomfortable almost two years ago. People took the streets to call out police brutality and systemic racism. That being said, and as the quote I chose points out, it is those people who took action that will be remembered throughout history. While protesting has been a tried and true method for change and advocacy, change can take place in more places than the streets and legislative offices. For example, 
teaching Black history beyond Dr. King and Rosa Parks, as well as the history of other minority communities in America, is just as important as protesting in the streets so that younger generations grow up with a better understanding and stronger sense of equality than the ones before them. In my own school, I'm a part of a civil rights stories club that educates us on civil rights history that we do not learn in our current social studies classes. By being educated on these stories, my friends and I are better equipped to have conversations around race. Being in this club helps us be more involved in racial equality and civil rights history. Because of the positive effect, additional education on Black history and civil rights has had on me and others involved in the club, other schools teaching more about this topic might have the same effect on their students, especially their students of color. Outside of education, change can happen through more diversity in fields like healthcare, law enforcement, education, and politics. With more representation in these jobs, more minority students will have role models to look up to and be inspired by. Increased diversity is also important in these careers so we can continue to improve the world around us by using everyone's perspective. To close, this quote is similar to the common phrase, actions speak louder than words. So I challenge you to go out into your community and have the difficult talks about race that others are not willing to start. Continue to learn the truth about the impact of communities of color and, and the challenges we face, and most importantly, work to improve diversity and equality where you can in your community. That is what the quote I chose from Dr. King means to me. Thank you so much, Brandon. You know, sometimes we wonder what it is that inspires us, right? To do a certain thing, to work together in a certain way. And I was just thinking about as I was listening to you, Brandon, and what inspires you and, and that real sense of learning, understanding, not only history, but your role in inheriting it and your role in moving forward from it. While listening to you, I understood much clearer what inspired my colleagues to help me bring this together today in this particular way. In some way, not only are we honoring the great teachers that you experience every single day, but we're honoring the great teachers that inspire us over time and space and history. And it's those great teachers that inspire us every day to come together and work together in the way that you just described. So I'm just really, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm taking this moment right in the middle of this conversation, just again, to thank each and every one of you for inspiring us. And remember, the people that you inspire now are people who are going to be speaking your name in the future. So thank you so much again. Uh, we now move forward to Kyla Logan. Uh, uh, Kyla is a junior at Simsbury High School. And Kayla, it may be Kayla or Kyla, but you'll correct me, I hope. Uh, uh, Kayla has two older twin brothers and lives with her mom, dad, and her dog. She runs track for Simsbury High School. Her hobbies include painting, listening to music, watching TV, and playing Sims. She's looking forward to running track in college and hopes to one day own her own business. Uh, Kyla chose the quote, uh, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Welcome, Kayla. Hi, thank you. It's actually Kayla. Um, this quote is meaningful to me because it says that even though we experience disappointment frequently, we must learn that we can't let disappointment affect us. Living without hope doesn't leave us with much to live for but we have to face disappointment before we can get what we have hoped for. It is what helps us grow and become strong. Martin Luther King had big hopes to change society's way of thinking, but he was mur murdered before achieving his goal. Even though it is, it is an old quote, we must still refer to it today. This shows how much of an effect Martin Luther King has still had, had and still has on today's society. Reminding us that no matter what challenges we face while pursuing our dreams, we must never defeat, be defeated by disappointment, but keep our eyes on the prize. Thank you, Kayla. That's, that's so beautiful. And just the notion of hope as the string that binds all of us together to keep moving forward purposefully is so powerful. And I really thank you for reminding us uh, of the necessity of holding on to hope no matter what. Uh, so thank you for that, Kayla. And last, but certainly not least, building up uh, to our last uh, student who will be presenting to us their inspiration, Terrence Lamont Jackson, Jr. Uh, Terrence is a senior at Middletown High School in Middletown. Terrence plays football and basketball for Middletown High School. He plans to study mechanical engineering in college. 
He loves music, comedy shows, and watching old television shows and documentaries and loves spending time with his family. Welcome, Terrence. Hi, how are you guys doing? I was told to explain this quote. The late, great Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But by all means, keep moving. As I pondered on this quote, I thought about how each generation before me, including my mom, really crawled and walked so I could run today. Every day I'm reminded via social media, the news, or in my everyday life that although there was a time where the color of my skin would have prohibited me from getting jobs, going places, and going to school, my skin color still has that effect today. For the past two years, COVID has caused a global pandemic and everything and everyone has been forced to shut down and a slowdown. But not even a global pandemic can stop the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 2020 was a hard year for me, mentally and emotionally. Not only did I spend a year learning online and missing out on sports and social time with my friends and teammates, but I experienced a lot of fear and uncertainty as a young black man. A part of this was because I watched video footage of Ahmaud Arbery being lynched while going for a jog and George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and countless others dying at the hands of police brutality. I was already feeling the mental effects of remote learning, but I remember being scared and feeling helpless for the first time in my life, all because of the color of my skin. These deaths happened within a month or two of each other. I wanted to go for a run and my mom said no, not because it was too cold, but she was now scared me to run in our own neighborhood. And I was so upset that I told her our neighborhood is safe and it's not like that. Eventually, she did let me jog, but she was, she told me that that's what Maude Arby's mother thought about his neighborhood. Um, we have seen how these things play out repeatedly, not to mention we are in a global pandemic. And I was wrong. The spring and the entire summer of 2020, I was no longer scared, nor did I feel helpless. My mom spoke at a protest for George Floyd in Meriden, and then we would watch the news and see countless others do the same. Uh, he did it. Martin Luther King didn't let anyone or anything stop him from speaking, marching, or protesting. If you think about that, all he went through on that bloody Sunday in Selma, because of his legacy, we didn't let the virus stop us from protesting for what was right. We were walking up and down the streets in every state and all over the world. We were not going to be silenced by a virus. We rose as a nation and made sure people knew that we weren't going anywhere ever and that we will still continue to say their names and fight for justice. COVID did change how some of us could protest, meaning how we would fly, but we found alternatives for those who couldn't run. And when we couldn't be outside physically protesting, we opened our computers and chatted on Zoom so we could walk. And when we couldn't go door to door, we went to social media and posted about ways to contribute by tweeting, sharing and making videos. And that was our crawl. And this quote, will always mean something to me. To me, it is more than words. These are everyday actions. Terrence, thank you so much. You know, you just, you just brought new life uh, and meaning to that quote for me. And I think for so many of us that have been watching by linking it together with not only your experience, but I bet every single one of us who was listening, uh, it, we felt it, we understood it. We've lived it there with you. So I want to thank you for linking us all and bringing us all together in the way that you just did. And in a lot of ways, linking together all of the words and all of the, uh, all the sentiments that have been shared today on this, our commemoration of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy. So I want to thank each and every one of you for sharing your messages. I did want to share that we will be, you'll be receiving from us in the mail, in the mail, a, a, a certificate, a couple of us certificates of appreciation. Uh, one is from the federal government uh, as represented here in the state by Senator Rich Blumenthal. And the other one will be from the commission. Uh, we will be receiving a, um, a, a, commemor a commemorative thank you from the African-American Subcommission of the commission. Uh, and we're just so excited that you were able to join us today. And I'll tell you, you know, some people, some people think that these 
commemorative plaques that we give each other to commemorate a day that we spent together are cheesy or that they're that they're not really mean anything. But I'll tell you, just recently, my mom came to visit me after um, uh, after a while, and she brought back to me all of the certificates that I brought to her when I was in school and about all of your ages. And she had a whole pack of them. And it was really interesting to me and heartwarming. And, and I have to tell you, it meant so much to know that all, over all of those decades, she kept those commemorations of those moments that I shared, not only for her and in honor of the legacy of those that came before us, but also as a promise to my family and my community that together we would keep moving forward. And the fact that she brought those back to me just meant so much. So, so we give you, we're gonna be sending to you uh, a, commemorate, uh, a commemorative piece of our work here together and our promise to each other to continue to work together in honor of the legacy of Dr. King. So thank you all so much uh, for your beautiful, inspiring words for joining us today. Uh, and again, uh, by all means, keep moving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.